Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. I got a lot accomplished today. I cleaned my car out, which it needs to be vacuumed, but hey, all the stuff is out of it that doesn't belong. So it was hot. <laughs> I was trying to get myself used to the heat because I'm going to be out in it tomorrow. And um, hey, I survived. I got really hot, but I did survive. So it's a good thing. All right, well, I was trying to set up my music. Hang on a second. Uh, all right, we'll just play what's online. Okay, well, I wanted to talk to you tonight about love God, love people, share Jesus. So that is our title tonight. We're going to look up some scriptures that talk about loving God. We're going to talk about loving people. And we're going to talk about sharing Jesus. So that is, excuse me, that is my plan. <laughs> I guess I'm sleepy. I don't know why I get so sleepy in the afternoons, but I do. So let us jump into some prayer. I didn't make many coffee this afternoon. I didn't have time. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, because you are on your throne and you are in control, God. There is nothing that you don't see, that you don't hear. There is nothing that escapes you, God. You are the supreme authority over all things created and all people created. God, you are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider, our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. God, you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness, but yet you're loving and kind and compassionate and patient, forgiving, and you want none to perish, God. Thank you, God, for loving us with your... Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just, we just cry out for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their hearts and their minds, God. That you would open their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals. We just pray for them to return and repent, God, and for you to reconcile their relationship with you, God. We pray for all the disasters that are going on, all the, all the many crazy things that are happening. There was a shooting in Austin last night God we just pray we pray God all this senseless senseless um, killing and senseless injury to people that are really not doing anything God it just doesn't make sense we need to love you and we need to love other people and everybody needs Jesus so we need to share Jesus God, we just pray for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray that you would uh, give them peace, comfort, and strength during their time of loss. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, I'm listening to the song that I shared last night, Famous For. I love that song. Okay, so um, I shared another song this afternoon. I was just, man, I've just been... I had to go to the bank, I came back, and I go, I'm going to clean out this car. I'm so sick of all the paper in it. I'm so sick of all the trash in it. I'm so sick of hauling things around that I don't need in my car. And so I did that. And my blessing was, I don't have my glasses in here. I have some sunglasses that I specifically bought when I got my glasses that fit my glasses perfectly. And there are clip-on things. And so I've been looking for them for probably years off and on. But I found them. 
found him in my car, right where I left him. God took me straight to him. I was so excited. I'm not going to lose him anymore because I like those that I can just clip on my glasses. They fit. Okay, so let's talk about loving God, loving people, and sharing Jesus. Okay, so I have been thinking about this song and message all day, but I just got the chance to look it up. That was 29 minutes ago. Love God, Love People by Danny Gokey. I love the lyrics of this song. It is so true. We must love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. But we must also love people too. All people. I mean, people that you don't even like. People that you don't even know. We need to have the love of Jesus and the compassion of Jesus for others. If we want to make a difference in this world, we have to be the loving compassion of Jesus in this world. This is what Jesus told us. Love God and love people. Why is this a hard concept for many? I, don't, I think because they don't have Jesus. They don't have the love of Jesus in their heart, so they can't share the they can't share something that they don't have. That's that's what I think. I'm answering my question. I have never seen so much hatred in my whole entire life as there is now. I have not. And it's not just in our country. It is all over the world. There is a massive hatred. I think I have black underneath my eye. I don't know. All right, I'll just ignore it. I don't know, maybe a shadow. I don't know what it is. Okay. All right, so um, these lyrics say it simply. And this is what we must do as children of God. We must love. Even when we don't want to, we must. It is easier to love everyone when Jesus is your Savior. I think that is the big problem. I think that's the huge problem that we see is that people do not have Jesus living in their heart, so it's hard for them to express something that they don't have. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish, John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. All right, well, I am struggling because I am really sleepy, but I have to get up early in the morning and go do my day of camp. I got my big giant cup. It says Grandy. That's my grandmother name. Grandy. It looks ten times bigger in the camera than it really is. Or maybe it is that big. I don't know. All I know is two of those a day, maybe a little bit more. That's the amount of water that I need. My body is happy when I drink that much water. So, alright, well I made this I made this for ladies' tea one year. Love God, love people, share Jesus. So I put Evangelism 101. This is Evangelism 101. This is what we need to do. We need to love God, love people, and share Jesus. Okay, so let's look in the scriptures. So my scripture today doesn't quite fit as well, but I really enjoyed reading it today. And it is about love. And I have my love t-shirt on. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Um, 1 Corinthians 13. We're just going to read all of it. This is, um, in my Bible says charity, which is love. Okay? Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity I'm just going to substitute love I am become as sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge 
and though I have all faith so that I could m remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, love never fails, but whether, but whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, that then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, and then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three these three but the greatest of these is love so love is the greatest between faith hope and love love is the greatest so is it easy to love people that do not love you back that do not even like you that treat you badly is it easy to love those people it really isn't but Jesus asks us to love them anyway. So how I look at people that are hard to love is I think, well, if we're both going to be in heaven, then I'm going to have to learn how to love them now because I'm going to be stuck with them for the rest of eternity. So... It's easier to learn how to love people now. And once you get that attitude of, I'm going to love people and I'm going to love you whether you love me back, then it makes it somewhat easier. I'm sorry, my nose itches. Okay, Deuteronomy 6 5 says this. Oh, it's actually, yeah, 6 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words, which I command me this day, shall be in thine heart. So we are to love God with our all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our might. And it says... And thou shalt teach them diligently unto your children, unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob to give three great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. So God wants us to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our might. And he wants us to um, keep it on our heart. And then he wants us to teach it to our children, to teach them 
to love him with their whole heart, their soul, and their might. And you know what? Pray and share, warriors. I believe this very thing is where we is what we are missing in society is that this basic love of God this basic love and respect of God has not been taught to all children there was a disconnect at one point and they quit teaching their children about God and that's what we see that is what we see on the streets now we see these children that do not have a concept of God. They do not love God. They do not know anything about God. And we expect them to do right when they haven't been taught to do right. Generation after generation. Even in the Old Testament, there were families that were following other gods. There's a lot of following other gods right now. And that's very dangerous. We need to follow the one true God. Okay, so that's two of our verses out of the way. So let's do Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, And this is Jesus speaking. I like this song. I am free. This was my song the last day of school. Okay, 2237. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets so again we are to love God but we are to love others too. We're to love our neighbors, which is everybody. It's not just your neighbor. Jesus doesn't want you to just love the people that live around you. Jesus wants you to love everyone. Everyone is your neighbor. And so he said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, the law would be the 10 commandments. And I would think that if you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. You're not going to break his commandments. If you love God and you have a reverent fear of God, you are not going to break his commandments. And then if you love other people, you know, half of the commandments are about God. The other half of the commandments are about people. Let's go back there. Let's read that. Let's go backwards to... I'm not sure where. I'm not sure where, but I can find it. Okay. I think it is maybe over here. There we are. Okay, it's in Exodus. I was looking in Deuteronomy, but it's in Exodus. Okay, so... Where are they? Okay, I'm just going to read all of it. I believe it starts right here. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above and that is in the earth underneath 
or that it's that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Wow. That. So people that hate God, he will place iniquity wow for several generations that makes sense and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt, do, shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. For in the six days the Lord had made, made heaven and earth the sea and all that is and all that in them is and rested the seventh day wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee so the first part of the Ten Commandments is about God the second part of the Ten Commandments is about people. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey nor anything that is in thy neighbors and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they removed and stood afar off so this these are the commandments that Jesus is talking about in Matthew that's the law plus so much more there's so much more other than the Ten Commandments. So, back to Matthew 22, when he says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So we have to love God, and we have to love people. So let's look in Mark 12.30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So if we love God, and if we love people, we aren't going to break his commandments because we love him. We're not going to break his commandments. We're not going to have gods before him. We're not going to do the things. We're not going to take his name in vain. We're going to respect him and love him. And then if we love others, we're not going to steal. We're not going to murder. We're not going to do those things because we love people and we're not going to do it. So let's look up Luke 10.27 and he, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor is thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. 
Okay, so he had asked, he asked, who did he ask? A lawyer. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And so he, he said the same thing that Jesus said. Okay. So let's move on to 1 John 4.19. Oh, well, let's go to John first. John 14, 23. John 14, 23. Oh, my back. I think I did too much today. Okay, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. So we must love God. We must love Jesus and the Holy Spirit too. Okay, first John first John four nineteen says this Okay. This is so good. I think I'm just gonna read it all. <laughs> Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. There are many false prophets out there. Believe this, this is truth. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. You could say the spirit of Antichrist is in Israel among the rabbis that are saying that this, is, this Jesus is not their Messiah. They're still waiting for their Messiah. So you could say that they have the Antichrist spirit, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Yes, it so is in the world. Uh, they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Believe, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Ooh, I'm getting warm. It's just me. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also love one another. This is perfect. This first John is perfect for tonight. That is the Holy Spirit. That is not me. It is the Holy Spirit sent me here. No man hath seen God any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. 
and that we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, wow, this is sharing Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also also what a perfect thing I was going to read 1 Corinthians 15 but I think that John 14 all of no 1 John 4 I think it summed everything up let me go see if there's something in 1 Corinthians that needs to be I'm going to go ahead and read it too. Um, my husband is preaching tomorrow. Our uh, our pastor is out of town, and um, he is preaching tomorrow about grace. And he needs to get in so he can work on it. But I'm I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be at camp. So somebody let me know how he does, okay? So moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, this is 1 Corinthians 15, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you... <laughs> oh, good. <sighs> For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? So I'm going to leave it there. But that gets into some good things about grace. I have to remind my husband about this. All right, so we are to love God, and we are to love people, and we are to share Jesus. We are to share the gospel of Jesus because we want many. We want to make heaven crowded. We want to invite. Everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. This is God's invitation into his heaven. And everyone, everyone is invited. Maybe I need to put that one further back because that's where the camera is. I don't know. 
still trying to figure all this out. Okay. God's invitation into his heaven. Have you ever been invited? You know, many people have not been invited because many people, generation after generation, don't even know who God is. They don't love God. They don't realize that God created them. They don't know who Jesus is. So there are many people out there, and it's not their fault either. The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. There is only one God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 But God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. And so this is, uh, this is scripture that depicts this picture that I have back behind me of the New Jerusalem. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So this is a salvation prayer, and it is not the prayer that saves you. It is believing who Jesus is. We read about God and how we are to love him and love other people. We are to accept Jesus into our heart as our Savior, too. That is our pathway to God. He is our bridge in between mankind and God. Jesus is the bridge. He is the only access. So, dear Lord Jesus, I, am, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus is your one and only Son. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. I turn I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart in my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. So if you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And uh, the angels are rejoicing. So if you want to grow closer to God, then read His Word. Read God's Word every day. It is truth. 
and start in Matthew. Learn about Jesus. And then pray. Pray to God every day. And uh, find some praise music. I'm listening to praise music right now. My little earbud. I'm listening to praise music while I talk to you. Okay. I believe that I did everything that God called me to do tonight. And I'm going to go feed my child. I think he's falling asleep on his bed, so I need to wake him up. Because I need sleep tonight. I to get up early. I'm thinking I'm going to get up at 5 in the morning or 5.30. I want to be able to do my quiet time before I leave. It's really important to me. So I think I'm going to go to bed early so I can get up early. I have a hard time sleeping on Saturday nights. I don't know what's up with Saturday nights. But I can't sleep good on Saturday nights. Okay, so number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. <laughs> and be gracious unto thee. I lost my place. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Wow. Wow. So, you can think of any other scriptures that go with this, love God, love people, share Jesus, then put them in the comments. If you have any comments, put them in the comments. If you have any prayer requests, put them in the comments. Um, I'd be glad to read your comments and answer you back. So, I'm going to go ahead and pray and get off of here. I'm going to pray for our youth, which are all at camp. God, we just come to you, and we thank you, God, and we do love you. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, God. We just love you with everything we have. We trust you, God, and we do love people. We love people as they are. We can't change people. Only you can change people's hearts and minds, God, so we leave all that up to you. All we have to do, God, is to invite them into your kingdom, share Jesus with them, share the love and compassion that Jesus has, um, and be that example to them, God. God, we pray for our youth, God. We just we thank you that the Holy Spirit is moving across the camp, God, drawing people to Jesus, God, and we, we praise you for that. We just pray for more and more drawing of the Holy Spirit to Jesus, more and more understanding that you would open their hearts and their minds to what you want to teach them, God. These are not our messages. They're yours from your word, God. We just pray that they would be open to whatever message they are to hear, God. I pray for our leaders. I pray that you would give them guidance in wisdom, God, and just open their hearts and minds to God because you're constantly teaching us as leaders also. Help us uh, to be the best leaders for these students, God. Just help them to know that you love them, God, and just instill that love in them that they would love you, God, that they would love others, and that they would go out and share Jesus. God, we just thank you for the decisions that have been made, and we praise you for the ones that are coming. And God, we just, uh, we're just so thankful, God. We're so thankful that we can pray to you, and that we can praise you, God, and that we can be still and listen to you, God. We just pray that you would give us the boldness to go out and to testify of the good things that you've done, to encourage others, that you would, that we would be more in your presence all the time, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, my pray and share warriors, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Pray for us. Pray for our youth. Pray for us as leaders. Pray that um, I had to drive out there to Aquila.
pray for traveling mercies to me. I do not trust my car as much as I did seven years ago. So every time I get in it, there's just this little doubt in the back of my mind. Am I going to make it there? Am I going to make it back? But I trust God. I trust God. And I believe I will. He will help me. I did clean it out today, so it's going to be like being in somebody else's car tomorrow. It's going to be like, where's all the junk? Where's all the stuff? Where's all the... I shoved a lot of it under my console, so if I hit the brakes, it'll all come rolling out. And then I'll go, oh, there's the stuff. There it is. I see it now. But I cleaned out my glove box. I cleaned out all the little pockets in the seats. I cleaned, I mean... I cleaned it more than it's been cleaned out in years. I cleaned out the back. Alright, well I gotta go. I gotta go. Cause I gotta go do things. I could just talk to you all night about what I cleaned out in my car, but it's it's okay. Um, hope you have an awesome Sunday and much love. My ring's too big. And cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.